All right. So after I say, we all we got, I want you to say, we all we need. All right? We all we got. We all we got. We all we need. We all we got. We all we need. All right. I want you to feel that in your belly, right? Because we need you. We need you. Each and every one of you. Like, like everybody in the room, raise their hand. Everybody on stage is like, yes. Right? We need you. We need you. So my name is Keisha Brown, and I'm the founder and CEO of Justice Connection. We are the first black attorney referral platform in the country. And so I built this because I wanted to make that connection happen, right? As soon as you start law school, I'm gonna give you a clue. As soon as you start law school, everybody and their mom is gonna be asking you, do you know a lawyer who does this? Do you know a lawyer who does that, right? And I remember the minute I graduated from law school, people in my church started calling me Attorney Brown. Right? Before I was just Keisha who sat in the balcony. Right? And then I became Attorney Brown, dear. Attorney Brown. And it's because we, as black people, know the importance of the law fundamentally. And we, as lawyers, black lawyers, are the defenders, the protectors, the advocates of our community. And so here you are on the precipice of becoming a lawyer. You're thinking about it, you're not sure. You came to this amazing HBCU pre-law summit, right? You got all dressed up, everybody looks so nice. And you said to yourself, okay, I'm gonna be a lawyer. Like, what does that mean? What does that look like? Right, so for me, I felt like people have always told me you should be a lawyer, right? I talked too much in class, everybody ever get in trouble for talking in class, right? Um, you might fuss or argue with folks, and they're like, oh, Lord, here she goes again, right? There's always somebody else who you were sticking up for. Don't talk about my, right? Like, so there were these elements that people would say, oh, you should be a lawyer when you grow up. And I didn't know for sure if I wanted to personally be a lawyer if I'd always been told this. And when I was un in undergrad, I had a good friend who was one of those people who's super diligent. You know, like that friend who like gets stuff done and she's researched and figured out where the LSAT course is and how much it costs and get the scholarship. So I just like stuck close to her, right? She was like, what are we signing up for? And I just did almost everything she did, right? And so that worked out. And when we finished the LSAT, um, I think others talked about that, I think Lloyd did. Our scores came back and I remember we went to um, a Georgetown uh, pre-law session, right, for like half and I remember the dean telling my friend she had paid extra money to get her score in advance, I did not. So she knew her score. And so he said, you need to take it again, right? So when my score came back, it was a little bit higher than hers, but it was close enough we both took it again, right? We both got into Georgetown Law. Um, but it's all, all the names. And there is a difference between all the different law schools. I don't want to poo-poo Georgetown, I guess. But I went to Georgetown went to the, the pre-law session, they said, we graduate more black law students than any other law school. And I was like, yes, I'm gonna be where the black people are, right? <laughs> Little did I know the reason why, right, is because their, their, their classes are humongous. So they just physically have more students. So after I was bamboozled and going to Georgetown, <laughs> trying to figure out where black people were, the good thing is, I was in Chocolate City, right? So I was able to hang out with Howard U, and I was able to learn from other law students, and I was able to party in Big City, which was a great party for me, right? And, but you know, all this time, I'm doing these things. And so at this point, I teach a workshop, often to undergrads and law students, and it's around building your network, right? So I'm gonna pepper in some of those elements as I continue to share about my story, um, because networking is a big part of that, right? So actually, the acronym is more than money, right? It's a positive um, and so the N stands for network. And your network is so important, right? Your network is so important. And really here, this is like your network. This is the beginnings of your network because I will tell you, everybody here who goes to law school is then becomes a lawyer and then is part of the legal scene. That's it, right? Like then we become the people who were like, oh, you're a lawyer too? Oh, great. What's your journey? Where do you work? And they become your network, your folks who are in-house, your folks who are at a nonprofit, your folks who are 
public defenders, your folks who are prosecutors, your folks who are government lawyers, your folks who are stuff. All of these folks then become a part of your world. And I will tell you, you need each and every one of them. Right? Your network has got to be tight. It's got to be broad. And that can be really intimidating. I'll tell you, my sister is the exact opposite of me. She's like, I don't want to network with anybody. I don't talk to nobody. I feel like networking is shallow. It feels like really fake. And I tell her, she doesn't listen to me, but I tell her that networking should make, you should feel comfortable in the network that you, that you develop, right? The network, you know, people talk about it's a word, it's a phrase, it's just action, but it's really a just like your crew. And some, some of your crew is tight, right? And you, they're, you're, they're your inner circle, and then there are those people who are on the periphery. And that's okay, everybody serves their purpose. And not in a sinister way, just in a we humans and everybody, you know, isn't coming over to Netflix and chill. So you've got to have, you know, people at different levels. So you want to make sure your network, being really intentional about that. I will tell you, I gave my business card out to a couple of the volunteers who are also amazing, by the way, very impressive. And everybody is so congenial, it's beautiful. And I will tell you, and for those of you, I'd be happy to give you my card to connect and hear and connect with you. 80% of y'all are not gonna contact me, which is why I don't mind giving my card out there. <laughs> you know, I am, I promise, give me your card. You're not, right? So those of you who do, not that's everybody else outside here. Inside here, y'all y'all are about that business, right? So it is about going that above and beyond sometimes. It may seem like a little like, oh, I don't have anything to say. Just say that then. Hi, my name is such and such. I met you at the HBC pre-law summit. I don't really have anything to say. I just wanted to say hi. Done. That's it. All right, now we're connected on LinkedIn. You're gonna to start to get my stuff, because that's how the algorithm works, right? Um, if you post, I'll get your stuff. But it then becomes, one, you get to see what my world is, right, and who's in my world. And I will tell you, I link, use LinkedIn like it is my personal role in this. Anybody who said that sometimes, even in personal world, I'd be like, oh, what's your name again? <laughs> right? So you look up everyone on LinkedIn to the D's point, right? Your persona is out there, whether you like it or not, right, oftentimes. And so it really behooves us to create your own content. Shout out to the content creators in the house, right? Um, it behooves you, if you're going to be online, right, and you're going to be on LinkedIn, to use it to your advantage. Build up your network. The other aspect of the, the, the presentation that I give around building your network is opportunities. Big on opportunities. And that means internships. How many of you have ever done an internship? Good. That's right, because y'all want to go to law school, so you're already on top of it, right? Internships, I think, are critical before you get into law school and even when you're in law school. When I was in law school, I interned with um, a judge in D.C. Circuit Court. I interned with Customs, U.S. Customs over at the federal government. I don't want to work for the federal government, like not my jam, but it was a great experience. It built up my resume, it built up my network, it built up people who could write me references. And I remember when I got the opportunity to intern with this judge, my mom was like, why are you leaving that good government job? You don't want to go work for a judge, you need to keep this job until you graduate. And I was, you know, so sometimes people don't understand your journey, but it really does behoove us to take advantage of all the opportunities that come to us. Even though that you're like, I don't want to do that. I don't know who they are. Does that seem cool enough? Well, everybody else is working at a firm. What does it look like if I work for a local nonprofit? You got to run your own race. Your own race. I will tell you, there is no, if you hear anything, you don't hear anything else I say, there is no traditional pathway to become a lawyer or even once you are a lawyer. People will say all the time, oh, I did an untraditional, uh, non-traditional path. It's all non-traditional. We all figuring it out as we go. Newsflash, right? It's all making it up, especially when you graduate as a black law student sometimes. You don't necessarily have to hook up like your white counterpart, that good old boy network. Don't let them fool you. Everybody is not, oh, I'm not studying. I'm just going to go hang out. No, they're studying. Uh -huh. Right? I remember one time my good friend and I, we were on our way to the library. We were like, oh, yes. 
We got, we packed up all our snacks, we got all our stuff, it was Saturday morning, we were on our way to the library, and this guy, back in law school day, we called each other by the last name, so we didn't know anybody's first name. So Mr. Hussein at that point, he's like our age, is coming from the library on his first break. We looked at each other, we were like, girl, we in trouble, okay? Because you've got to put in the work, right? You've got to take advantage of every opportunity out there. And a big part of that is your mindset. Your mindset is critical. And I will tell you, your mindset is shaped by what you choose to put in it. It's what you listen to, whether that's music or people talking in your ear, right? The podcast or whatever it is, you have got to be in control of your mindset. I have a, a, a playlist on my Spotify it's called youthebomb.com, <laughs> right? And sometimes I gotta put that bad boy on and just let it ride and just lift me back up out of the doldrum. Because you've got to be your biggest motivator. Sometimes your mom is not gonna get your story. Your grandmother is not gonna understand why you're taking out those loans. Your friends are gonna be like, girl, that's not a big deal, we already finished, let's go brunch. You've gotta be able to, to know your your destiny, and I'm telling you right now, each and every one of you have an amazing destiny in front of you. You're living it now, and all you're doing is laying the foundation. All you're doing is laying the foundation. And I want you, as much as you can, I know everybody said this, and I'm gonna close by reiterating it. You've gotta take advantage of these opportunities. And that means coming out of your comfort zone a little bit, right? So some of it might be like, Oh, she did say I could talk to her, but again, I don't have nothing to say. Maybe she was talking to somebody else. My GPA is not that high. I've only done one internship. I haven't done three. Get all of that out, right? Get all of that self-defeating, unsure. It's going to come, but you stand firm in the, real, in the reality that you are here on purpose. You want to become a lawyer? Go be a lawyer. We need you. And many of us, especially those of us who are still here, shout out to the black women still on stage, right? And it's such a good not for me, okay? I've been up here, okay. They stuck it out for you, right? And there are so many of us, yes. There are so many of us who are sitting it out for you every day. But you have to take advantage of that. You have to, I'm not gonna chase you now, okay? You can email me once, and if I don't email you back, I'm not gonna, that email is now on page three. It's not because I didn't wanna respond. You've gotta follow up and say, oh, maybe she'll hate me if I send it to her, but I won't, and if I do, so what? <laughs> right, then I'm not your best friend anyway. But you follow up and you say, hey, 